welcome to Soul Symbols. My name is Shelley. I'm a writer, an astrologer, and a card reader, and I'd like to welcome you to my channel. Happy Saturday. It is the weekly energy card reading, and that is a weekly post that I do here on my channel where you, the viewer, get to choose from one of three tarot or oracle decks. And um, what we'll do is we'll go ahead and do a quick three card spread to see what the energies will be for the next seven days. Um, it does not need to be the, oh my gosh, third week of July, <laughs> I can't believe it, uh, for the, the messages to resonate. Um, if you come across this, um, this video at any time, or if you're drawn to the cards or the images, um, please feel free to check it out because there may be a message contained for you. We have a saying in card reading, which is take what resonates and leave the rest. If you feel like a, um, a, you know, a, um, an interpretation is not resonating, you do not need to take it as, as it being your truth. Um, you could check out another pile or maybe even another video. Um, sometimes I always, there are times that I'm drawn to more than one pile and it never fails. There might be a few messages contained in one and then a few messages in another and between the two it comes together and gives me all the information I need for the week, right? So that's the, that's the we're, we're kind of going with the flow. And speaking of going with the flow, um, I wanted to kind of incorporate a, a national day. If you are a follower of my channel, and I am grateful for my followers, thank you so much. Um, what I do is I like to, um, I do sometimes do separate uh, pick a pile readings um, for national days. Um, I'm actually filming this video on National Fashion Day, <laughs> which I know is kind of a weird, a weird national day. I was real excited about it because honestly, you know, um, you know, there's there's been so much challenge and so much conflict in the world right now. You know, any any little thing that you can do to kind of just make the day different, make the energy positive, and um, and I do. I, I have a wonderful oracle deck that's called the Fashion Oracles. Um, it's by the same maker. Um, there's actually kind of three of them. There's like there's musical or music oracles, which I have that deck, and then there's actually I think even a like an author oracles. I don't have that deck, but that's another one that's made by the same publisher. And then the deck we're going to be using today is the uh, fashion oracles. So it's got images of, and um, I've got a beautiful quartz on top of it. But it's got um, yeah oh Coco Chanel. There we go. That's that sums it up. But yes, um, each of the cards has an image of either a fashion model or a fashion creator. And um, then it has quotes from that creator. So um, if you've seen me use my music deck, it's very similar to that. It has three quotes that really kind of flesh out the reading. And I'm excited to use that today in honor of Fashion Day. Now, um, you know, personally, if you check out other videos on my channel, I am very, um, I try to be very natural in the things that I do. So when it comes to fashion, I, I definitely gravitate towards, you know, like organic cotton and linen and, you know, good, nice biodegradable fabrics. But of course, you know, there is, there's something so dynamic about the fashion industry. You know, there's just something very, you know, it, it feels so Leo. It just feels like, you know, it feels like center of the spotlight and you know personal expression and and I just thought that would be such a fun fun theme to incorporate in our weekly reading um, to to get in the groove I decided to go to my charms dish and go ahead and pull out three charms that I thought were fashion related so um, oh also before we get into the piles um, I did want to show off a little bit I'm sorry I'm just very proud of this um, a, a few weeks ago I used my music cards and I showed you the bag um, because what I do is I sew bags, speaking of fashion, I, I don't make clothes, but I make bags. And I did, I went ahead and I made a fashion bag for my fashion cards, and I just thought this was so cute. I went to the craft store, and it is cotton, it's organic cotton, it, it's very, very, it's uh, very soft, but I just thought it was so cute, it's like pattern you know the that uh, you've seen those those patterns by simplicity and it's the it's the little models that you see on the front of the little paper pattern bags and I just thought that was the cutest so I'm sorry I just had to share that with you I get a I, you know it's very um, I, I do several things I like to work with my hands it seems like my hands are always in the mix I like to scrapbook and I like to I like to make cards I like paper craft and then I like to sew and um, and it just it kind of gets me out of my head. It lets me focus on a, on a, on a craft on a skill and um, you know and 
Um, I also think that if you, if I just wanted to, I'm, I'm getting drawn to say this, if, if you feel like times have been really hard, either that or if you've been really stressed out, um, you know, if, if there's something that you do with your hands or just some kind of craft, you know, it doesn't have to be girly, you know, <laughs> it doesn't have to be scrapbooking, but, you know, something that you do with your hands, the, uh, you know, I've, I watched this great video here on YouTube the other week that talked by, um, was, uh, produced by a um, psychologist who talked about how knitting really helps with trauma. <laughs> and um, I think that that works with any craft. You know, if you, if you are a wood carver, if you, you know, um, if you're a musician, um, you know, if you write music, um, if you create bags or if you knit or crochet, I think it really helps get you out of your head and it helps de decompress and um, and get out the pent out in pent up energies in um, in your in your energy field, but okay. That said, blabbering over. Sorry, guys. I'm feeling. Um, you know, it's funny. I started off feeling so tired. And now I'm all animated. So I I'm feeling your energy. Thank you for sending energy my way. But we do have three decks here. I'm kind of excited. Um, the middle deck I have not used in a long time. And when I get to that, I'll explain why. But um, I went ahead and I went to my uh, handy dandy charms dish. And I pulled out three charms that I thought was related to fashion. So the first deck is the, um, the what deck is it? The Line Strider Tarot. The Line Strider Tarot by Cilio Thompson. And um, with it, I have my beautiful little lady in red. It's a red dress. If the camera will focus, it's kind of hard to focus. I think it needs, there we go. It's a beautiful red enamel dress. And um, I think of several things when I see this. Honestly, um, I think the song The Lady in Red by Chris Berg. I know that's an old Eva Goody. I think it came out in 86. But, um, oh gosh, I, that song's going to be playing in my head. But also, um, the red dress represents uh, the Red Dress Society, which is all about heart health and cardiovascular ha um, health. And I, I just, I also get a general kind of Leo or Aries vibe. So when we get into your deck, that's going to be real fun. But deck number one, Line Strider with the red dress. You, you, you foxy lady, you foxy gentleman, you. Um, the second deck I'm real excited is actually, and I, I've, I was looking at all my decks and going, okay, which ones have I not used in a while? Because you got to, you got to use them or lose them. That's the rules. Um, the second deck is, um, and all the names and the authors are in the description box below, but the second deck is um, the Art Nouveau Tarot, and I actually, this is actually very vintage in the fact that this is the very first tarot deck that I ever bought. And I'm going to go ahead and cut the deck just out of curiosity. The Six of Wands, haha. <laughs> oh, the victory card, yes, yes. This is the first deck I ever formally bought, and I, I made the monumental mistake. We, we, the internet was not as big back then as it, as it is now, where I could just Google, um, Google my mistake and figure it out. But um, when you're learning the tarot, it's always advised that you go with kind of a simple deck, one that has very, you know, either that or, you know, the Rider Waite Smith, so you can actually learn the meanings before you jump into the pretty interpretations. And this deck is Art Nouveau, and the images are gorgeous, but they are, they're, they deviate a lot from the traditional Rider Waite Smith. And, uh, you know, it was, it was, it's a it's a beautiful deck. It's a good deck, but it's not the deck that you really want to learn with. So I learned more with my second deck, the the Morgan Greer, than I did with this one. But this is my official formal first deck. And sorry, long story there. And then with it, I have I think I'm gonna have to put this on my palm every single time because it's the middle of summer and I'm still pale. Sorry guys. Um, it's a little um, if you look at it, it's a little needle and thread. I thought that was so great. So it is a little bit about sewing. Um, it, it can also mean mending too. So uh, keep, bear that in mind. The charms really speak to the read. Now the last deck is one of my favorites. And oh gosh, guys, I'm, I'm so thrilled because this was actually my first uh, Kickstarter endorsement. Uh, Kickstarter is a website where you um, fund people. You go in and if you like their project, you can pledge money. And if the project actually meets the, the limit for pledges, then the, you get the deck. 
And um, this is the Slow Tarot. So this really was from the Kickstarter campaign, which makes me feel all special. I have a little card that says, I, I forget what number I am, but um, it's the Slow Tarot by Lacey Bryant. And it's kind of hard to tell because the beautiful back of the card has so much gold in it. And I think it's beautiful. It has swords and cups and flowers. But, um, oh, this one you should be able to see without me. I'll put it in my palm anyway. But <laughs> uh, we have the little scissors. And the scissors can mean, you know, cutting material. It can also mean cutting things out of your life. Um, you know, I was just giggling today. I'm, I, I, don't, I don't indulge in the vino very much. But I was, I was kind of thinking today that just for giggles, I might want to create a, um, a tarot drinking game. And please tell me if this is something that you'd like to see just for just for the kicks, just for the thrills of saying that I did it. Because, um, what was it, Bill Gates said that um, um, intellectual property has the shelf life of bananas. I think he said yes. So, you know, it probably is not my idea. I'm sure 20 people thought of it before I did. So I'm not, I'm not laying claim to it. But I just, I was thinking about um, how many... Um, how many tarot videos that I watch and I do I love watching tarot videos they're very calming to me and they help me learn and um, and you know they just give me such insight on what I do um, but um, I wanted to I thought that it might be funny to create up you know how they have those lists like okay if you're watch um, the tarot drinking game like if, if someone says you know um, cutting someone out you know take a drink um, <laughs> Um, if someone says, oh, hold on, hold on. Here, I can pull up a few of these. Um, uh, you know, I, I'll, oh, oh, oh. Uh, um, you know, getting rid of what doesn't serve you. Take two drinks. Um, <laughs> inner child, take a drink. Wearing a mask. Oh, gosh. Take, take three drinks for that one. And then um, <laughs> higher self. Um, um, new beginning. Um, I don't know. Please, if you are so inclined, please, if you want to add to this list and you and you want to just, you know, willingly give this, the, the, the idea, you know, post a comment and I'll type it up. I will type it up. All right. I'm, I'm, this is the longest intro ever. All right. I'm going to pause the video. Uh, please choose from your intuition or if you like the artwork, if you like the charm, if you like the number, look at the timestamp if you're a numerology person. And I'll see you in a minute. Okay, we're back. That seriously was the longest intro ever, but you know, we go with the flow. Ooh, the Tawa. The Tawa. I always, you know, it's so crazy. Every single time, I know I, I probably am not allowed to say this on YouTube, but the um, every single time I see, sometimes when I see a dramatic tower scene, I think of that line from Tangled, where she, you're never leaving this tower, ever. And I'm just like, <laughs> I'm really loose this read, guys. Please forgive me. Uh, you know, please, please subscribe if you think my weirdness is cute. But oh, four of wands on the bottom. All right. Okay, I'm clearing the palette. We're gonna we're gonna be real together for your read here. No no worries. So uh, deck number one, line strider tarot, the lady in red. And you could be the lady. You could be the man looking at the lady. <laughs> what I do think of when I see that is I do. There's a there's several there's several movies that talk about you know seeing a woman in red. And I would I would also if you're really resonating with this pile after the read, um, I would go ahead and look up the song by Krista Berg, or Lady in Red. He talks a lot about you know how 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 dynamic it is. I'm getting a real uh, Queen of Wands kind of feel. And, um, you know, the Queen of Wands, uh, I'm sorry, the Lady in Red is dancing with me cheek to cheek. There's nobody here. It's just you and me. Um, and the way, I, the way I want it to be. And one other thing about the lyric is he says, I hardly know this beauty by my side. So you're, I do, I'm getting a real strong sense of elusiveness. And I'm going to go ahead and put this, uh, this little red dress in the center of your sun. Because I do, I think you're shining bright this week, you guys. Male or woman, man or female. So beginning of the week, it is, ooh, eight of wands, seven of cups, holy Toledo. Okay, uh, ooh, I wanted to fall out. Uh, 
Okay, please clarify the Ten of Wands. Ooh, all right. This is kind of coming out towards the middle. Oh, wow, guys, you guys are working hard. You guys are working hard. Work, work. Eliza. Ooh. And Coco Chanel came out again. When I cut the deck earlier, and that flipped, guys. That flipped. You have a flipper. Okay. Let's see. Let's get into this. Oh, wow. All right. So let's get right into it. You know what? Right off the cuff. Right off the cuff. I think... I, and, and also it's a very queen it's a very queen of wands thing I'm feeling such queen of wands you might be a fire sign either that or if you have fire in your chart because it's more than just your sun sign if you got some fire oh oh guys ooh, hold on let me throw this out here astrologer hat Mars is in Aries it's in Aries and that's its ruling planet it's ruled and gosh guys the fire signs, especially the early degrees, if you are, if, if your sun, moon, anywhere in your chart is one to five degrees, any fire sign, any air sign really, um, other than Libra, um, you are feeling a, a beam of energy that you have not felt in a long, long time. Because honestly, I feel like, you know, it's funny, I'm, I'm a sun sign Libra and I feel like I've been beat up a little bit in the last four years because Saturn has been in Capricorn, which is a squaring influence, and you've had a lot of planets in Cancer. So you just feel like you're fiery. You're a fiery direct person. You like getting to the point. You like cutting to the chase. You don't like any of this uh, you, because I'll be honest, I you know, I have Cancer in my own chart and I love it. It's very warm. It's very wrapped up in blankets, but to an Aries person, it is like getting a hit with a tsunami of wet towels. It is not comfortable and you know, and then Capricorn is very practical, but it's a very slow moving sign. So I feel like lately, it's almost like you feel like you've been off the leash a little bit. Now we have had some eclipse, we had eclipses, eclipse eye, uh, sorry, I can't speak of uh, Mercury retrograde, which goes direct this weekend tomorrow, by the way, yay, um, in cancer. <laughs> so not out of the woods yet, yet uh, my fire signs, but almost there. But um, you like to cut to the chase, and what's been happening, and especially with all the world events, you probably felt very cooped up, and you were just, it isn't that, and it, and it isn't that you want to do anything irresponsible, it's just you need room to run, you need room to breathe. If you do that six feet away from somebody, so be it. <laughs> I think you've really probably had it being in close quarters with everyone, and this is really your time to kind of run a little bit. Now, the other thing that I'm probably getting from this is that in the larger scheme of things, this probably has the other thing about being being cooped up and having these kind of things impact you um, is that you've probably it's probably really made you realize what your base needs are. Like if you really are a more independent person, it's probably really illustrated the fact that you need freedom, that you need, you know, you you need to be yourself, you know, you need independence. And um, and I feel like you're you're finally getting a little bit of that. And definitely with Mars being in Aries, holy Toledo, it's like boom! It is it is you know firecracker at Fourth of July. It is like let me go, because I need to get out of here. And um, what I'm kind of seeing here is you know with the red dress, I'm getting a strong Queen of Wands energy. And that I'm not even and it's it's interesting. Normally when I see the Queen of I think of the Queen of Wands, I get a bead on one of the fire signs. I know it's a Sag. I know it's a Aries. I know it's a Leo. Here I'm getting that it could be any one of those. All I'm getting is that you're shining in your personal dynamic power and you can be a man or a woman um, I'm also feeling feeling like um, you know my mom who has a Venus in Leo by the way and she she does she's the cutest thing she has so much water in her chart but a Venus in Leo um, she always says she always said um, when you feel blue wear red and that's what I'm feeling with this read because at the beginning of the week you got the seven of cups and you got the eight of wands and the Eight of Wands is running. The Eight of Wands, we had a tarot on the Eight of Wands, and you see those 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 wands are flying through the air, right? They're they're synchronized. It's all systems go, right? And 
also, again, Mercury goes direct on Sunday. So we're finally... It, it takes a it takes a few weeks for it to get back to the same point before what happens is when a planet goes backwards it kind of does this full stop you know have you ever been on a train or a metro bus and you know how when it stops it kind of wobbles a little bit it kind of stops and then kind of you know kind of pushes you forwards and then it starts going the other direction. It's kind of the same thing when it starts to go direct again. It, it kind of full stops and it kind of wobbles and then it starts to go forward. And what we need to do is we need it to actually, so there's gonna be quite a bit of clarity, like things, problems that have cropped up in the last three weeks um, are really gonna start clearing themselves out and that's what I'm kind of seeing with this uh, towards the beginning of the week. Maybe there was some kind of long-standing problem that was really plaguing you. It was really because the other thing is the Seven of Cups is the Seven of Cups is feeling like 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 in a fog, like everything is just murky, right? And um, you see it. The the imagery in this is actually quite beautiful. It almost looks like it almost looks like wine pouring down, but it's pouring up, right? You don't know. I think in the last few weeks, you you really didn't know which side was up and which side is down. The other thing is that you see these kind of shards. Um, I feel like you have felt very fragmented. That's what I'm getting, fragmented. And I, I think that you've really, in the last few weeks, you've kind of really not known where to go and just kind of feeling kind of lost. And by the beginning of the week, it's going to be kind of all systems go. You're going to be getting clarity. The other thing is that I'm getting the feeling that the other thing with the um, the Eight of Wands is the Eight of Wands is about getting that me missing piece of information um, so you can go forward. So maybe you've really been kind of lost. You've really, you've been kind of drifting and then all of a sudden something at the beginning of the week finally um, comes together and gives you the information that you can all system like the green light to go forward i've always noticed that the eight of wands anytime it's held up um it's usually because it's usually um and i almost i really parallel i parallel it to my daily life because um i do work in service so what it is is it's it's new, normally like a service case where i I, I'm asking that something be done, but I don't get, I don't hear any response. And then a day goes by and then three days goes by, you know, something's happening, you know, because normally you'd get a response right away, right? Um, it can be the same thing in reverse. Maybe you put out an email and said, can you please, you know, fix this? And you're not getting a reply, not getting a reply. There's usually method to the madness. There's a reason that you're not getting a reply. It's because usually there's, there's something more complicated going on behind the scenes that needs to be really ironed out and then the moment it gets ironed out there's that one last you know piece that says okay that's fixed you know we're all good now you know and that's when everything starts to go forward but i do think this is kind of it does feel a little mercury retrograde ish I also think that you, I, I get the sense like you've been waiting for something, like you've been kind of, the other thing that I'm getting is that also with the lady in red, because the lady in red is a lot of confidence. Uh, I do, I do keep hearing the, the phrase, you know, wear, wear red, when you feel blue, wear red. I, I almost feel like you you probably not, there's some kind of situation going on where you have not had all of the information. There's something that's been kept from you. And you can't go forward because you, you're you're missing the relevant information. So you're kind of in limbo, right? And what's happening is um, you're going to get the missing piece. Something's going to go forward, and that's also wearing red. Wow, right? It's an red is a very action thing. And and look at all the petals too. It looks like all the petals are red, and they're just blowing the same direction. <laughs> that's so awesome. Now by the middle of the week, you've got quite a bit of energy here. Um, I was I was trying to clarify the Ten of Wands, but the Ace of Pentacles wanted to come out. It flipped towards the middle, so I'm taking this together. Um, but, oh, now it's trying to flip as a cross. I'll read it both ways. I'll read it as a block to this and as the contributing energy to the middle of your week. Because this is the root. The, the bottom card is always the root and then the stem and the bloom. And the other beautiful thing is an Ace of Pentacles is a seed. 
right? It's the seed of something. It's the planting of something. And wow, guys, I, I really get towards the middle of the week. The other thing I'm seeing is when you're feeling blue, wear red. And the crazy thing is the Ace of Wands is a real fiery character. So we have the Ace of Pentacles, we have the Page of Wands, and we have the Seven of Wands. And the Seven of Wands is, is fighting the good fight. It's fighting the good fight. Um, so wow, guys, I, I think you're keeping your head above, I think you're keeping your head above the chaos. And you're doing it with a lot of grace. I think, not even grace, you're doing it with like charisma is the, the word I'm hearing. I think that um, with this missing piece, but this missing information is giving you the energy, it's giving you the green light to go forward with some kind of goal or something that you had going on. And by the middle of the week, you have the Ace of Pentacles is, is it's something that you planted, right? It's a goal. It's a financial real world goal that you planted and you're real excited about it. But this is the Page of Wands. And the Page of Wands is almost that, it's that, it's almost that naive excitement. It's like you just, it's kind of like the fool's energy and the fact that you just, you're, you're looking forward to it, looking forward to it. Have you, you know how when you were a kid and you were looking forward to something, you didn't care about what was standing between you and the thing. You were just like, when I get there, I'm going to be happy, right? When the weekend comes and I can go to that birthday party, I'm going to be so excited, right? It's kind of like that mindset. You're not really, you're not, you're not thinking in a king's energy. You're not thinking in a queen's energy. You're thinking almost in, in kind of a learner's energy. You're just, um, and what I'm kind of getting is it's, it's, you're going with the flow, and you're going in the with the in with the flow in a real almost kind of blunt way. You're you're. Um, I also I, I love the fact that um, and I learned this from a reader here on YouTube. I forget which one. I, I tried to, to quote the the reader and cite their their um, their knowledge because they're all so intuitive. But um, I had one of the readers had mentioned about how pages are um, you know. Pages are very blunt messengers. You think of a child, you know, the way, um, have you ever, you know, if you've ever sent, if you've ever sent a child to go, like if you, if you tell a little kid, hey, I'll give you a piece of bubble gum if you go tell your sister that dinner's ready, <laughs> right? And, and you know that little kid's going to run in and go, Sarah, dinner's ready, you know, <laughs> and then come running back for their piece of gum, right? It's kind of like that energy. It's kind of like, and it's not to say that you're being immature, but it's, it's, oh, also guys, look at that. You've got, you've got an arrow there. I've, this is the first time I've ever seen that. That's a symbol of Sagittarius. So I, I yeah, I am getting, um, I'm get, getting a feeling as if you are, it, it isn't that you're trying to be in an immature energy, but it's almost as if, um, it's almost as if you have to stay in kind of that, that direct energy in order to handle the circumstances that you're handling in the middle of the week. In the middle of the week, you got the seven of wands and the seven of wands is this goat that's standing up on a ledge and he's got all these animals, you know, it, it looks like chaos is going on around him, right? And what you're doing is you're, you're the goat, you're the page of wands, you're, 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 you're keeping in your own innocent mindset, you're, you're staying in your own mindset, because if, if you partake in the chaos, things are just going to break down, right? Um, you know, it's one of those things where, it isn't that you're trying to be separate from people, but if you've ever had those circumstances in life, either um, either in relationships or at work or in family dynamics, um, and there was there was also an, another really good relationship coach here on YouTube that I think talked about this, where 
you know, there are people in life that you know you can rely on in hard times. And usually those people are the ones who are, those, those persons are usually the ones who have known hardships themselves. It's usually the people who, who have felt kind of left out in the cold, have felt abandoned, where they're very self-sufficient. And um, sometimes, you know, what happens is later on in life, you can get into relationships with people who are very easygoing and easy to love, easy to be in a relationship with. But the problem with that is that when times get tough, you know, when chaos rears or you, be, you get into financial straits, that person or those persons around you really don't know what to do. They're, they're not like the self-reliant, resistant people. They'll either you know, cry with you, break down with you, or help you implode is, I think, how the reader said it. Um, and I'm not saying that those people are around you, but I do see that you're, you're, you're trying to fight the good fight. You have some, you have some very challenging energy around you. And the only way that you can navigate it is by kind of staying in an innocent mindset, right? Um, the other way that I can kind of, one other way just to throw it out there, because you can be a man or a woman watching this read, this could relate to a child. Um, the Page of Wands can be a fire sign child or just a, you know, a, a, a child. And what it is is that you could be trying to create, you, you, you might be laying a foundation a stable trying to lay a stable fine foundation for this this child but things are things are just very chaotic it's almost like you have to fight for that foundation that's one other way I can read it because we do we have quite a few people who watch these reads so I, I want to throw that out there but the main energy that I'm getting is definitely that you've been feeling kind of adrift you've had to keep your energy up and at the middle of the, by the beginning of the week, you really do, you're trying to go forward. You're trying to go forward, but there is a little bit of missing information. So I do get the feeling at the beginning of the week, um, you, I think you'll know it. When you get the green light, you'll know it. If you haven't gotten the green light yet, just, you know, wait. And I know that's really uncomfortable energy, but there's missing information. There's something, there's more information that you need that you're not seeing that hasn't been revealed to you at the beginning of the week. As soon as you have that additional information, then it's all systems go. Middle of the week, you're staying in an energy, a very, um, you, I also get the feeling that with the Page of Wands, um, those are little actions too. It is almost like, okay, well, I've got a lot on my plate. I'm fighting a lot right now. Let me wear red because I am feeling blue, right? Let me, it, I, I do get the sense like it's little things. I think in the middle of the week, I think you're handling a lot right now. I think you do have some challenge. You feel like it's you against the world, but you're trying to keep, you're trying to keep you're fighting that fight with a very innocent mindset because that innocent mindset is keeping you positive. It's 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 giving you. I'm 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 thinking of a little candle. Like it's a little it's a little candle. You're holding a candle and keeping your spark, um, even though you're you're up against or you you've got a few challenges here, but you have a solid foundation. Um, the other thing that I'm kind of getting is the ace is the ace, right? It's the something it hasn't grown into a full tree yet but you're you are doing your part to make sure that happens but I do also get the feeling as if in the middle of the week it's almost like you have to stand apart you might you might have to state your opinion and other people might make it out like your opinion is a little juvenile but I think that your opinion or whatever you're standing for here is what you believe in and as long as it's what you believe in wear red right wear red you know like if it's what you believe in stand up for that you know um you might be made to feel like it's a you know like it's a childish belief but that's your ace right and i do think the other thing about the seven of pentacles is that's fighting the good fight um it's fighting the fight that no one else wants to fight because it's the right thing to do and it's the other thing i'm hearing is it's the right thing for you right other people might not understand it but it's the right thing for you but i do think that you're holding it down you're holding it down you might feel a little pressured by the middle of the week but you know that you're growing your seed right you know that you're growing your ace of pentacles and you're going to stay strong even though people people there there might be some conflict that is making you out like like this is you know 
like this is foolish um but it's it's the hope in this endeavor it's the the you know it to be the right thing to do and you're going to fight for that and um uh, and then you know you really you're standing in your power that's the other thing i'm hearing you're standing in your power now by the end of the week you are going to be a little worn out um you're going to have the 10 of pent uh, 10 of wands and you see this woman she's she's crunched down right she's sitting down it's almost like she's kind of exhausted right I, I kind of, I see that image as being that moment when you kind of like, you, you, you have to sit down, right? But you still have miles to walk. So I do think that you're, you're having, whatever you're doing this week, you really have to work hard for it. And maybe by Friday, it is going to feel, you, you ever have those weeks that by the time Friday gets here, you're like, oh my gosh, I think I'm going to sleep the whole weekend, right? Um, I do think, and this, this does, this energy does kind of you know, carry over to Saturday and Sunday. But um, I do think that you you are, you're going to have a lot of things on your plate. The other thing that I kind of get with this is that I, I, I feel like I'm getting a sense like you're just not going to get a break. Um, have you ever had it where you, you know how they, they say, and particularly in North America, they always say that we're workaholics and it's true. You know, um, you rarely, if, if your job requires that you answer emails on the weekend or, you know, you have to put out fires or, um, it's not a swords card, but I just really get the feel like, the feeling like with all the wands, um, wands is our energy, right? They're these dynamic, you know, exciting, you know, full speed ahead kind of endeavors. But when you have 10 of them on your plate strapped to your back, it's almost like, God, you know, I started all this, but you know, damn if I can finish it, right? I'm tired. Um, so I do, I do feel like by the end of the week, you're going to be maintaining all of those starts, right? Each one of those wands is an ace and you're going to be, you started 10 wands and it, it's not that it's your fault or that, that you deserve this. It's just, you're going to be feeling the obligations of all of those endeavors. Um, I do encourage you to try to put some of them down when you can. Um, if it is possible to communicate, like if someone, if you're getting work emails via text over the weekend, you can politely reserve the right to say, okay, you know, it's Saturday, I'm, I'm going to wait till Monday to reply to this, right? Um, if that doesn't, you know, cause too much of a backlog. But um, I do think that you have you're you're dealing with so much that it's it's making you exhausted. It's making you collapse down. Like okay, let me sit a minute. But then you just after you sit down, you have to turn around and get back up and start walking again. Um, but the end of the week, you are going to be a little bit more tired. Try to try to rest. Try to put some of those wands down. Now your fashion card, and it's fashion day. You got Coco Chanel, and oh gosh, I know she's such a controversial figure, but I really do. I, 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 there's such a style about Chanel, and um, she was also a very big advocate for women, and um, you know, and tweed and jersey, and you know, if you ever watch a biography of her, she, she did. She had, she had a lot of skeletons in her closet, but she, uh, pun intended, um, <laughs> but she, she had a lot of tweed too and pillbox hats. Um, but uh, she was a, a Parisian designer, and it says, uh, tweed and twin sets support women's rights. There you go, tweed and twin sets. I love me a good twin set, man. Um, elegance and perfume are life's only essentials. Ooh, how classy is that? Uh, elegance and perfume. So spritz some perfume on while you're wearing your red dress. That's the other thing. If you're feeling tired, put a little bit of red on. You know, maybe put on some red jewelry. You know, throw on. I know it's summer and most of the world, but um, then the last one is fashion isn't what you wear; it's who you should be. There you go. So I also get a sense that you know, wear things that make you feel like yourself this week. I think that would really boost your energy. I think also it would give you that sense of page of wands. I, I'm kind of feeling that. I, I think a page of wands character is the, the person who wears the clothes that, that they define, you know. It's funny, I, I, I celebrated kind of a sad milestone this week um, and I was looking at this picture of me when I was little with my dad and um, I wore a lot of dresses with sneakers. <laughs> 
and and I, I like jackets <laughs> and I'm the, the weirdest thing in the world because you see I'll wear a jacket that's way too big for my shorts and it looks like I'm just wearing the jacket or I'll wear a dress with sneakers with heads and, or uh, with uh, Chuck Taylors and I'm like oh my god that's that's probably the tackiest thing ever but you know what I like it and I I'm comfortable so I'm always feeling like that, you know. I also kind of feel like if if any of this is related, I do kind of get a sense with that that quote there. Maybe as a woman, you might feel I uh, I don't know. I'm I'm kind of getting this message, so I'll say it. If you do feel like you're kind of working harder, um, you know, either you know, if you feel like you're working harder, if you feel and and it if it is making you just feel like everything's the dirge or that things are just so challenging if you want to get into your femininity or get into your masculinity wear something that you know makes you look real good put a splash of red in it and you know just you know i also say this if you i and i do this and it's tacky it's dorky the moment if if you do have to go to work or before you log in on the laptop, because I know a lot of people are working virtually, do a little strut. Do a little strut or look in the mirror and really acknowledge how good you look. You know, wink at yourself, you know, you know, let yourself know that you're, you know, you're one, one, one sexy mama, one, one hot babe, one <laughs> handsome fella. And, um, you know, start the day with that energy. That'll be kind of like your splash of red. That'll be like your wearing red moment, you know. But I do think, and also, you know, please take care of yourself at the end of the week. You know, try to try to put down any responsibilities that are not absolutely necessary. All right, so deck number two, we've got the, um, this is my Art Nouveau. And the, the charm we have is the little bobbin, uh, the, um, the spool of thread with the needle. And again, this this typically this charm really means uh, it speaks to me about mending. It, it's you know um, it it does. Uh, so I don't know if that interpretation speaks to you or might might be kind of an overall theme. We got uh, oh we got six of pentacles on the bottom, and the tower and the lovers are trying to pop out. So hmm. You might be mending something with someone, or you might be looking to mend something with someone this week. So, beginning of the week, justice. Oh, oh gosh, guys. Uh, it's not a bad card. Just, you know, make sure you're on the right side of justice. <laughs> Don't be on justice's bad side. <laughs> Holy crap. Oh, wow. Ace of Cups trying to pop out. That's some pretty good energy. I am definitely getting a mending vibe. I am definitely getting a making amends vibe. The Six of Pentacles can be about giving someone back, um, you know, um, giving something back that is owed, like what somebody's due. Ooh, you got Marc Jacobs. Oh, awesomeness. Oh, how beautiful is that? I can't wait to read that, guys. All right, so let's go ahead and read it. Um, so beginning of the week, uh, did you get, you got one major arcana, and that's at the beginning of the week, you got justice. And this really is a beautiful justice. Gosh, guys, it's a Libra card. And again, this is the Art Nouveau deck, and it's my pretty deck. Um, I've, you know, it's funny, I, I have not started an Amazon wish list. I thought about that. I'm not trying to, like, you know, you know, bum I'm not trying to ask anybody to buy me a deck, <laughs> but you see quite a few other readers who are like, hey, if you want to buy me this deck, and I'm like, mm, you know, I, you know, make a public Amazon wish list, but uh, I, I try to be good. I try to only, I try, if I already have a deck of the same theme, I try not to get multiples, and the Ethereal Visions deck is, the Ethereal Visions deck is also very Art Nouveau, and it's gorgeous. It has like gold gilding on it. But I, I refuse to replace it because this is, if you watch the intro, this is the first deck I ever bought. And it's a pretty deck. And it's one of those things where I hadn't really formally learned tarot. I wanted the pretty deck. And I couldn't read a darn thing because it's so pretty and it's not traditional meaning. So you really have to kind of learn, learn it with the regular Rider weight or something simple. Then move on to the 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 
the artsy deck. But, um, sorry, rambling. Um, but the beginning of the week, uh, you got justice. And justice is very powerful. I, I've always said, you know, Major Arcana's major arcanas are the bigger gears of the clock right it isn't that the beginning of your week your monday is going to get you know get slapped with a fish of you know something random right it's not like that uh justice is when this is something that's been in process for a while and you're just you know the the events the the larger events are the bigger gears of the clock and as they turn they they turn the smaller gears, which are, you know, the years of your life, which are the small, and then it turns the smaller gears, which are the months, the days, the moments, the encounters, the experiences. And I think what's happening is at the beginning of the week, you're going to get a strong sense of justice. And what I love about justice and being a Libra is that it's fair, right? And it's the fairness comes from when you look at it and we had a tarot on it, you know, there's almost something a little bit fearsome in it. The person you're judging, you're, you're either being judged or judging someone else. But let me go ahead and clarify it just out of curiosity. Please clarify. Justice. Okay. We got the five of swords and we got the nine of cups. Oh, gosh. Yeah. All right, guys, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to call it. I'm going to call it. Basically, you feel a little defeated, right? You feel defeated and you feel like it's unfair. And the other thing is that you feel like, I can kind of read this one of two ways. Justice is, it's, it can be someone judging you or you judging someone else. But because it's a major arcana, it can also be the divine. It can be the universe making level, making fair a situation that was unfair. And what I'm seeing here is I'm seeing the five of swords, which is that defeat card, right? It's the one person holding all the swords while two other people walk away utterly defeated. And then next to it, you have the nine of cups. The nine of cups is that smug you know, I, I look at all the cups that I have. I'm so lucky, right? But it's also a boon card. It's a wish fulfillment card. So there's two ways that I read this. First way that I read it is that maybe you had something happen to you where someone really kind of did something where they kind of shut you down and you felt like just rejected, dejected, and they walked away looking like they were, you know, oh, I won. You know, I'm the winner, right? The other way that I read this, and because justice has that duality, it could be that maybe someone kind of made you feel like the loser, or maybe you felt like the loser in a situation, but really you're the winner in that situation. It's almost, if you've ever heard the expression, um, rejection is God's protection, um, there might have been a situation that you thought, you know, you were the loser. You thought someone got off better, uh, got one over on you and that you just lost, right? And it's almost, I'm almost getting a sense like you couldn't believe that you lost. Like, wow, damn, you know, when did that happen? Because I also get the sense that you're a very smart person. It's not like you walk into situations going, okay, I'm going to let this person take advantage of me. But it's almost like by the, the the scales of justice will be leveled, right? Um, and it's nothing to be afraid of. It's not like, um, I don't, I, I truly believe people don't go into life trying to be malicious. A lot of times people are just, um, they're just walking around with their own baggage and their own damage. And a lot of times, unfortunately, people end up injuring other people based on their own um, damage. What what happens is maybe that person had been hurt in the past and so they go around hurting other people because they haven't expressed their pain or they haven't worked through their emotions, right? It, it ends up almost, and I hate to compare it to this, it's almost like a disease sometimes. Sometimes when you've been through something you start subjecting other people to the same pain and it just spreads, right? But justice, the beautiful thing about justice is that justice evens the score it and it's not in a vindictive way what it is is that the scales have to be balanced right you know if 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 someone steals from you 
you know, they go to court and they're tried for it, right? You know, and justice is served. You would, you know, get reimbursed for what was taken. Um, it's the same thing in kind of the energy of life. And again, it's not to scare anyone. It's not saying that, you know, lightning bolt's going to come out of the sky because you, you made a stupid mistake and it hurt somebody inadvertently. No, it just means that this situation, whatever made you feel like defeated is it's going to be made right. And the other thing that I see about it is that it's almost like there was a purpose. There was like a higher purpose for this happening. And it's almost like in order to get the, the better result, you had to, that, that kind of crappy circumstance had to occur. But the scales will be level, right? The scales will be leveled. The other thing that I'm kind of seeing that is if, if this was a situation where you felt like someone kind of did you dirty, then um, the other thing that I'm kind of seeing is that um, you might have started off looking like, you, you know, looking like you were the person who got, you know, that lost, quote unquote, but you're going to come out, you're going to come out on top. It's almost as if, again, you know, by that happening to you, it pro propelled you to your victory. It propelled you to your, I'm really kind of, I'm almost seeing kind of a gift. Um, I've been seeing that a lot lately. It's almost like it's a gift. There's some kind of, you know, for the heartache or for the, the whatever injustice you suffered, there there there's going to be some kind of really happy it's almost like you're going to get something that you really really wanted from from this this pain you know from this pain that something good something really good's going to come out of it and the thing is you're going to actually see evidence of it at the beginning of your week and i know this is just the weekly energy uh, it's it's heavier towards the beginning because you have a major you're going to see evidence of something that has been going on over the over time something that made you feel defeated but in that defeat or you know having having gone through that i think that i also think that you handled that defeat with a lot of grace you see these two women there you know they're not up in anybody's face they're not you know they're not trying to throw down because they felt you know that they were you know wronged um, so justice is going to make it right. You see justice sitting above and going, okay, we're not going to, you know, we're not going to let that stand, right? And, um, but what it is is that it, is, it isn't that, um, I think the, what the universe wants to tell you is it's just, um, and I know that sounds all woo-woo, sorry guys, but it just wants to let you know that it, it knows what you've suffered. It knows what you've been through. It is for, you are going to be really, the other thing is it's going to be really surprising. It's going to be a really happy surprise. What you went through was not for naught. And um, the, the, the justice of it, justice will be served. And the thing is the the eye of justice and the other thing, and maybe it's because I'm Libra and I, I just love the concept of it, that the, the concept that energy cannot be imbalanced for long it has to be brought back into balance and it's it's just a natural it's 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 the natural polarity of life it's the natural ebb and flow it's the natural um balance and um so i i i just think the other thing is that I do think that you've earned your karma, your good karma out of this experience. The other thing is that I'm seeing a lot of purple in the background and there's a lot of purple in the boon card. So you're going to be, I'm, I'm also, the thing is you're going to see evidence of this at the beginning of the week. I also think that you're going to be real astonished at, at the, the level of justice. The other thing is that, um, you know, it's funny being a Libra, sometimes when things go my way, I don't even expect a, a, I don't expect um, a big consolidation. I just expect things to be righted. This is more indicating like, okay, you're not only going to get an apology, but you're going to get a present with a big ass bow. <laughs> you know? I'm sorry, guys. And I'm not saying I don't want to get your hopes up. I'm, I'm, you don't have to expect that at the beginning of the week, but you're going to start seeing signs. You're going to start seeing evidence that there, the bigger gears are turning and there was a reason for this pain. And it's really going to be, it's, it's going to level out. It's going to be in your favor. You know, the, the scales will be righted. 
the scales will be righted. And I do feel like it's in your favor. I'm getting a strong feeling as if, I, I really feel like you've really, that you have been fair in your past dealings and you really, you probably have you know, this is this is something that's that's long due for you. It's um, I am I keep, I keep hearing consolidation, um, not consolidation, consolation, consolation. Yeah, like this is this is due to you. This is what this is what is rightly yours. There you go, guys. What's rightly yours, and you're going to see evidence that the 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 greater you know the greater energies is bringing this to you, and it's rightly yours. Now, the begin in the middle of the week, you got the King of Wands. And wow, this is a real kingly king, by the way. This is, you know, he does. He looks like Zeus. <laughs> and this deck, there's a lot of Zeus-ly looking guys. Uh, the queens always look a little bit more Gibson girl. But um, now, middle of the week, I really think, and we how to tarot on that King of Wands. If you want more information about it, please watch that video. Um, if this is your energy, I really get the feeling like this is somebody else. I think this is a person in your realm. In your realm. Looks like his realm. <laughs> Looks like he rules the realm. <laughs> There's also an eagle here. There's an eagle here. Um, wow. But, um, which makes me think emperor is what, and, and oh, in the first pile I mentioned, it, um, Mars, the, the planet in the sky right now, Mars is in Aries. So if you are any a fire sign, Leo, Aries, Sagittarius, if you're in the early degrees, if you have any planets like one to six degrees fire, you're feeling it. You're feeling jazzed. Um, so this could be someone that's around you. Um, the King of Wands is a real, he's a mature energy. Um, I do kind of get a little bit, I am getting a little bit of a fatherly energy um, but this person is very dynamic. This person knows how to take action, um, but he's very warm and loving. Um, I, I do get a sense. I, I, I just get this feeling that towards the middle of the week, you're going to have some kind of interaction with a, a very strong fire male who's, who's really going to help you take action, um, or he's going to... He's going to encourage you in some way. That's the other thing that I'm feeling. Um, he's really going to encourage you. It's almost like he's going to give you the guidance that you need to to move forward. Either that or if you are dealing with the King of Wands, it can be, it can be a spouse or someone you're interested in. I, I think they're going to be showing up. Um, this, this, this person is going to be showing up in the middle of your week, and he's an action person. But he's a ma mature masculine. I almost get the feeling as if someone's going to show up, and they're going to be the real deal, holy field. Like they're going to be like, I want to do this. This is what I've been thinking about doing. What do you think? And by what do you think, it means just say yes because this is where we're going, right? It's, he, it's you see that look, right? You see that king. The the woman is just kind of like, yes, dear, <laughs> and he's like, all right, forward, onward, Godspeed. Um, so I do think that in the middle of the week, you're going to be talking to someone. Someone's going to be kind of, uh, approaching you. That's a very fire masculine and that can be a parent. It could be a father or it can be a man who's very much in his mature masculine energy. He knows what he wants. He has a plan and he might be presenting that plan to you at the beginning of, uh, in the middle of the week. And, you know, it's funny, the 4th of July, if you're in North America, the 4th of July just passed, and I always watch Captain America, and I always think of that line that's so snarky. He always, like, um, he's, you know, talking to Captain Rogers, and he goes, um, you know, what is that, that, that campy song where he's like, you know, the man with the plan, what is your plan today? <laughs> <laughs> the man with the master plan, what is your plan today? <laughs> That's kind of, the, I am kind of getting that, guys. You know what? Um, if this is your energy, you're going to just, you're going to be feeling really strong in the middle, and you're going to be, the other thing is that the mending, the, 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 the needle and thread, I, I think, I think you're going to, whatever you're doing and if the King of Wands is your energy, I really get the feeling as if 
um, just because justice is is moving in your favor, you're gonna you're still you're gonna you're gonna sit strong in your power, but you're not gonna showboat, right? If if things start going your way, you're gonna be strong, and you're gonna. The other thing I'm hearing is ground rules. <laughs> it's almost like you're setting the ground rules. So it is possible that maybe if you're getting an apology from someone or something again, you know, you're getting some kind of surprise. It's almost like and you could be a woman in this energy, you're going to be sitting strong when this surprise comes. It isn't like you're, just because justice is swinging the scales in your direction, and this is also Libra and Aries energy, which I think of as a real good balance. You know what I think of? I think of the balance between Libra and Aries, which is that it's the I versus the we. You know, it's I am versus we are. Um, I don't think that you're going to rub anybody's nose in it. But I do, you know, like if you are getting some kind of uh, righting of wrongs because the mending, the sewing. Um, but I do think that you're going to sit there like, you know, queen. If, if, you're a, if you're a feminine, if you are a female watching this, you are going to be sitting like the freaking king of wands. Like, okay, uh, apology accepted. You know, but you're going to be sitting there with your, your, your staff like, okay, you know, been through some stuff, you know. Uh, I, I'm not forgetting that, but I do get a sense that you're going to be real balanced with it. I don't think that you're going to be smug. The other thing is that sometimes the Nine of Cups can can be a smug card because technically you're winning, right? Like, okay. Um, I don't think that you're going to come across as pompous, but I do think that it's going to be clear and kind of the undercurrent that, you know, you were right the whole time, right? You know, the other person doesn't have to admit that. The situation doesn't have to acknowledge that. But the, the, the undercurrent, the feeling of it is going to be clear. Just, you know. And the other thing is that I think it's giving you permission to enjoy that a little bit. Because the other thing is you've earned that, right? You know, someone came, you know, was acted like a jerk, took your swords. And then later you get your swords back, you know, um... You have the right to say, look, you know, no one's taking my swords again. You know, I, I, you know, that wasn't right. That wasn't right, right? So if this is your energy, you're sitting real strong. And it's okay for you to sit strong. Um, I just, I think it's just a reaffirmation that, you know, you don't, you don't have to roll over after you've been through so much, right? You're allowed to be strong. You're allowed to be strong. Um, but the, the other thing is if, if this is a person that's coming to you, this person might, they might be making, if this, if this is a person coming towards you, they might be making previous wrongs right and they might have a little bit of pride involved in it. And I think what they're concerned about is that they may have been wrong and this is a, this is a surprise. This is what is due to you. But, um. It, I, I think it's also important to, to know that this person has has also learned a lot. The other thing that I'm thinking is that if someone did wrong you, they learned from the experience. And when they come to you, they are going to come to you in a mature energy. So you really don't have to, you know, I don't think that you would. It's just, you know, try not to make them feel bad about it, but s sit your boundaries too. You know, if something wrong happened to you, I, I think you'll keep a good balance with it. Sorry to ramble, but you'll keep a good balance with it. But this person might come to you with a little bit of pride, but they're also going to come in a mature energy, which is really nice. And it's really attractive, too. The, the King of Wands is very dynamic. He's very warm. That's the other thing, too, is that I'm getting a lot of warm energy because uh, the, 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 the Five of Swords can be very cutting and cold. And the, to follow that up with some warm energy is actually, that's very fair, you know, that's fair. You know, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna treat you like a, you know, like a hyena because, you know, something crappy happened, but, you know, you don't let it happen again is kind of the feeling. Um, end of the week, you got the Knight, the Knight of Swords, which is on that horseback, running in full speed, and you got the Three of Wands. You got the Three of Wands, and wow, guys. You know, the, the typical meaning of the Three of Wands and we, we how to tear it on this is your ship's coming in. 
it's just ships coming in. Now, sometimes it can be a little bit of a waiting card, but the fact that it's the root of the situation and the Knight of Swords is above it, um, I do really get the feeling that this whole week, this whole week is going to be a, like a balancing of a lot of energy, guys. It's going to be a little bit of a pendulum swing. Um, it's going to be going from kind of the, the justice. Um, now, again, justice is over time. So in the past, you have ex experienced some extreme um, disadvantage, some extreme loss. And it's it's swinging back into your favor with with it almost being like a gift, like, um, you know, something really something really wonderful gained for all of your hardship. And. Again, you know, you're going to be commute. You're either going to be in the King of Wands energy, or you're going to be interacting with the King of Wands. And by the end of the week, someone's going to be coming to them, heading towards you with their hair on fire. Um, I am almost getting a sense like, if this is some kind of court case, <laughs> maybe some kind of court case is finally settling. Um, and by the end of the week, you really, it's. You know the the ships have come in, and now you you have, you know the. I'm getting the sense that someone's going to be rushing in to either tell you what's been going on. Yeah, I really get the feeling this because this horse is rushing towards the king. I I really get the th feeling like. It's almost as as if in the middle of the week you're going to start uh, talking to someone, and they're really stepping up, which is more than what they've done in the past and it, it kind of piques your curiosity and then by the end of the week it's going to be full all in full on information like routers wire hey you know this person's going to be on a mission what's been happening and it's really going to give you information that you needed to know information that you've been waiting to know um but i do think it, this is really good energy it's I'm almost getting a feeling as if you're the you see the look on her face is it's looking as almost as if she looks really surprised and then you see that knight rushing in. I really get the feeling as if again I'm 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 seeing two kind of cards of sudden communication and the king of wands is an action person, the three of wands is an action card. I really get the feeling by the end of the week you're going to be getting some information that you were waiting for and it's really going to surprise you. I think some of it might even be different than what you were expecting. It's entirely possible because this five of swords are swords. You might have been up in your head. You might have thought something was a defeat and it really turns out that it was something completely different. It was something different. The other thing that I'm kind of getting from this is that maybe with all of this that you had really walked away from something, you would really, you were really looking on, you had turned away from whatever had happened and you were like, let me just look at the horizon, you know, let me move forward, let me not even bother with this anymore. And then, then all of a sudden something from this past situation starts rushing in. You know, and and you're getting new insights. You're getting new information as to what 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 happened, and it, it really was different. You know, it it was it was a different scenario than what you thought. And I also think that with the three of wands, that that information is going to change your vista. It's going to change your perspective, and it's also going to you know adjust how you want to go forward. Now your fashion card, you got Mark Jacobs, and it's uh, true. True beauty lies in the imperfect. Fashion is about desire. Who said anything about need? <laughs> if in doubt, there's always social media. Oh wow, guys! You know what? True beauty lies in the imperfect. You know what? I'm almost getting a feeling, and again, you know, all this energy of you know. A, one, a situation that went from, you know, down in the dumps, dumps to the heights of ecstasy. <laughs> it's almost as if, it's almost as if somebody might have kind of bumbled a situation with you, right? It's almost like someone 
something happened and you thought that you were being duped or betrayed and it turned out to be the complete opposite or something different and true beauty lies in the imperfect maybe somebody really kind of came across as a little imperfect to you right the other thing that i kind of get from that is that you know with justice being kind of a libra card and i know i'm guilty of this all the time I sometimes look at the world and expect everything to be fair or I expect everything to be perfect and the world is not perfect and actually it's kind of beautiful for how imperfect it is if everything was you know all cut and dry of, of every situation you know where the challenge in things sometimes really does help us grow and and it, it it's what makes you beautiful right sometimes your scars are what makes you beautiful and um, the other thing is, um, you know, the other thing that I get from that, too, is that maybe maybe you you were subjected to some really hard emotions and maybe you didn't react the best way. But do not beat yourself up for that. You you did the best that you could do at that time based on how you were feeling. And there's no you know, nobody's perfect. Right. Um, and. I think the justice card also plays into that because, you know, you're you're not on this planet to to endure pain and hardship. You're on this planet to learn and grow and 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 to be happy, truly. Um, fashion is about desire. Who said anything about need? <laughs> and with these wands, and especially the King of Wands, you know, desire. You know, who said anything about need? Um, you know, um, I do also think that you might be desiring something. I also think that with the King of Wands, if this is your energy, I think the universe really does want you to get in touch with your desires. Um, you know, needs are important, but I think you almost need to kind of light a you know, spark in your soul. Um, you know, because I do think... I do see that, you know, even if you get all of the clarity regarding whatever happened here, once you get your justice, you can really decide where you're going forward. You know, how do you want to proceed? What do you want to do with your life? And then if in doubt, there's always social media. <laughs> so I do also think that maybe, you know, it being fashion week, maybe, um, or fashion, National Fashion Day, maybe you could look to social media. Maybe it would be something exciting to see, you know, what the fashion trends are, you know, uh, by the influencers, and maybe try something new. Maybe go back to something that you used to wear when you were a teenager. The other thing that I'm kind of getting is that I do also think that maybe, maybe the reason that someone comes in with their hair on fire at the end of the week is because of something they saw on social media. You might have somebody watching your social media, or maybe this justice comes about from something that you either see on social media or something that you do. Maybe you have a post or something that that encourages this justice or has somebody coming forth and giving you clarity. But gosh, Mark Jacobs is the best. I think he's been in every single... He's been mentioned in, in music songs, and <laughs> he, he really is. He's, he is the best. All right, guys, last but not least, and wow, oh, this is going long. I've been doing long videos lately. Um, that's okay. I, I try to make them thorough. If it's only once a week, I, I try to make them thorough. But we have the scissors. The scissors. And again, when it comes to the charm for the scissors, I do kind of see, I do see that that can mean cutting something out of your life. Um, it can mean, um, you know, it can mean crafts. Um, it can mean, um, I also think of pruning. So maybe not so much, not as drastic as, you know, cutting someone out, but maybe pruning something back. You know, I know my hair, my fingernails, my plants. <laughs> when you trim something, it tends to grow healthier. So I kind of think of all those things when I think of the scissors. And, oh wow, you got the Hierophant on the bottom of the deck. So let's go ahead and see the Slow Tarot. What is, oh my gosh, we got a Knight of Swords again. He was in the last deck. In the middle of the week. Wow. End of the week. Oh, there's the Hierophant again. He popped out. Please clarify the Hierophant. If there's clarification. <gasps> wow, guys. Oh, and goodness, you got the world. You got the world. All 
All right, let's get your fashion, since it's National Fashion Day. What's your fashion? Ooh, okay. Charles Frederick Worth. All right. I've never heard of him. I don't know if he's more of a classic designer. I'll have to Google him. I'm sorry, not all of the cards in the deck I know, but I could still get, could still get a bead, no fear. So wow, guys, at the beginning of the week, holy Toledo, you got, and the way I always read this is I always read it as when three cards come out in a spread, I read it as the root, the stem, and the bloom, right? So the bloom is what is happening, but the, the, what's, what led up to this happening is these two cards. And the bottom card is you got fortune, you got the wheel of fortune. And I love this card. Um, I actually think this was in the How to Tarot. This is Lady Luck right and she's tossing coins your way the the wheel of fate is turning in your favor right the wheel of fate is turning in your favor and what happened was I do think that maybe you've had a little bit of heartbreak recently it might have been in the past you see three broken teacups there and he's crying there's two cups that are still standing and you see an open door I love the slow tarot it has so much description and you see rain pouring down in the background. But I, I really get the feeling as if, um, what's happening is, I, I really get the feeling with the Knight of Swords being a, a real mental card, I think, I think you've really, at the beginning of the week, I feel like luck is turning in your favor but it's almost as if you really you're you're not you're not seeing it as much i think what you're doing is i think you have a lot of mental energy when you look at this card you see someone charging ahead on a horse he almost looks like a, a jousting knight you know he's got the full knight's armor and you see all these birds right they're flying like like an angry flock and um at the, at the ground, you see, you know, it's almost like you're charging forth. I think at the beginning of the week, I really get the feeling I'm getting a strong sense of motion. And with your, your charm being the scissors, I think, I think you do not want to stay any more in any negative energy. It's almost like I really get the feeling like mentally you want to you want to mentally you want to go right you're tired of sitting there crying and honestly when i look at the skull and bones i almost think of kind of death there it's almost like you want to in your own head you want to charge forward you want to gallop over all of the bones of everything that has made you sad and you want to follow the flock. It's almost like you're going, you know how birds go fly north for the summer? <laughs> it's like, let me charge ahead. And I think with the Wheel of Fortune being there, I think that is a good thing. I think what you are doing is at the beginning of the week, you are not allowing yourself to mull over any losses anymore, right? Because the other thing that you see is that with the Five of Cups, the two remaining cups are right there and the horse looks like it's facing that direction right um it doesn't mean that you're charging towards a new relationship but i think you're charging towards your happiness i think in your in your own mind um i think there might have been something in the past because the other thing is i'm seeing kind of skulls on the on the horse's uh dressage um I think in the past you might have had a little bit of heartbreak or you might have had something that was just keeping you in a sad energy. And again, that could be anything. That could be the memory of um, you know, it could it could just be the times that we're in. You know, maybe if you maybe if things just feel really a stare right now, you know, things feel just really sad. And you for a long time you've been preoccupied with just how sad it's been, right? Even though there you have you have things waiting for you to discover, new things that could make you happy. You, you've been kind of stuck. And I think what it's saying is the wheel is turning, right? And it starts with this breakthrough. It's almost like by you, by, you know, I'm, I've always been, you know, therapeutic wise and psychologically wise, I've always been a real advocate of what I call sitting in the poop, which is, you know, you do have to feel bad emotions in order to really exercise them, in order to get them out of your system. But 
there are some times, there are some times in life where just m mercilessly distracting yourself <laughs> is sometimes the way to go. And that is what I am getting from this. It's almost like saying, okay, get that wheel turning. You know, if, if sitting still is going to put you in this crappy ass energy, don't sit still. Um, read a book, uh, play a video game, um, go for a run around the, the block um, wearing a mask. Uh, you, could, you could journal, you could write a story, you could something in your, do something with your mind that really gets you on that horse running around. And when you get on that horse and run around, you're going to trample all over all of those that that you know that those dark energies that have just been keeping you on the floor, right? And I think that's the mindset you're going to be in at the beginning of the week. And I think it's a very good mindset. And again, with the scissors, I think I think you're really you know and and scissors are almost kind of like swords, right? They're blades. <laughs> um, and there's two of them, right? I think you should just, if, I, I'm, I'm getting the sense that that's the best energy to be in. You know, um, that's not always the best advice for every situation, but for your situation at the beginning of next week, at the beginning of this week, you know, if, if sitting still is going to put you in a sad mindset, don't sit still. Keep your mind busy. Go do things. Distract the heck out of yourself. <laughs> and I think distracting the heck out of yourself is not only going to get your mind engaged, it's going to get you thinking. It's going to get you excited about things. It's going to get you excited about life. It'll keep your mind off gloomy thoughts. And it's going to, it's going to, the, the wheel, I really get the feeling that the wheel is turning. With you getting on that horse, the wheel is turning. You're turning that wheel. And that's, that's fortune. That's Lady Luck throwing you a coin, right? I also get the feeling like, have you ever had those moments in life where you really have been preoccupied with something sad and the universe, like, you, you kind of send out, you send out that mental prayer of like, can I please get my mind off this? Can I please just not think about this right now? And then all of a sudden it seems like the, the, the you know, the storm clouds just go away or maybe a movie comes on that you want to watch and it, it totally gets you out of your head. I think that's what's happening. So that's your energy in the beginning of the week. And I really encourage that you wholeheartedly embrace it. Go off and do, do a million different things. You know, maybe your family will even think, good Lord, what got into her? She's like a little ta Tasmanian devil running around, you know, doing this, doing that. You know, write a blog. Po I'm sorry, that's so archaic. Uh, do a TikTok, um, you know, uh, post a Facebook thing. Uh, the other thing is that with it being swords, it's very social media thing. Maybe you're real busy with social media, but um, also stir that up. Stir that up. The other thing that I'm getting is that maybe you're showing on your social media how not sad you are. Go ahead and do that. Rock on. You know, light that up. Seriously. You know, do a million posts a day. You know, well, not a million. Don't don't annoy your family. But um, <laughs> but definitely post quite a bit of posts. The other thing that I'm getting is I'm hearing content. You know how content content is king. That's what we always say in um, in literature. Content is king. Um, and conflict is, is King's consort. But um, try saying that three times fast. But uh, go ahead and really, you know, uh, that's the other thing is that maybe you're really uh, also, maybe you are really charging ahead on your social media. Maybe you kind of went through something that was a little bit sad and you're, you're like, I'm not laying down and taking that. I'm going to, I'm going to go to the lake and post pictures and I'm going to, you know, write about this and, you know, dance about that. Um, really live that up, you know, really get into that. Now, middle of the week, you got the fool. And gosh, guys, oh, what a beautiful card. Um, so in the middle of the week, you got the fool, and you see him jumping off the cliff. I really get the feeling like um, it's almost like you needed a, um, at the beginning of the week, you did feel a little bit pulled back, but by the middle of the week, you're, you're really going to feel like the other thing I'm kind of getting is that maybe all this activity that's with social media or writing or thinking is really going to spark an idea and what it is is that you're no longer going to be in armor right you're going to take the armor off you're not going to feel as vulnerable anymore right it isn't going to be you on a mission to you know avoid your sad feelings it's going to be like okay let me take all the armor off be in my shorts 
and let me jump off that cliff, right? So I do think that the other thing is that I'm seeing kind of a leap of faith. Um, so this is really a beautiful week, guys. I really think by the middle of the week, you're just, you're going to be in a good mood. You're going to be in a free mood. Um, I think the beginning of the week, you're going to start getting out of this. And again, the scissors, I feel like you're cutting out something, something that, you know, okay, doesn't serve you. Um, if you watch the beginning, <laughs> something that doesn't serve you, um, take a drink. Um, <laughs> the middle of the week with the fool, I think you're going to be feeling really free. You're going to be feeling lighthearted. It's almost like this sadness, and it almost looks like the same person. Except, you know, the person is wearing pants. Here, you're wearing shorts. Maybe you'll actually get out in the sun. You know, it's summertime here in North America. But you're going to do something that really, this, this, whatever was weighing on you is not going to even be on your mind anymore. And it's going to feel so liberating. It's going to feel so liberating. The other thing is that I think you're stirring up ideas. And again, with fortune being there, you're stirring up ideas that could really, um, really be prosperous for you. And the fool is just kind of like taking a risk with those ideas or, you know, uh, the other thing is that this person's not afraid to fall. This person's not afraid to fall. So I really get the sense like you're going boldly in a direction of, of being fearless and you're not letting anything hold you back. And that's a beautiful, beautiful energy. And um, you are, you're going to feel very free. Now, the end of the week, you got two major arcanas, and wow, guys. And this was on the bottom of the deck, and this also flipped right out. So you got the Hierophant, which is like, in this deck, he looks like the Pope. It looks like, you know, the Hierophant. And what that is, is that, you know what I'm almost getting, guys, is that I really get that you're going to feel... You know, the Hierophant is about the status quo, but it's also about, it's kind of about higher learning. It's about being a spiritual leader. It's also about being a mentor or a teacher. Um, so I do think that at the end of the week, you're either going to be talking to someone that you consider to be a spiritual mentor, someone that really um, teaches you, um, Either that or by the end of the week, and again, oh, you've got three major arcanas because the fool, four, wheel of fortune, fool, wow, guys. Um, and again, majors are not something, they're not meteorites that came out of the sky for no reason. This is, this is energy that's been following you around the whole time for years, for decades, but you're, you're seeing, you're actually seeing the manifestation. You really are... The other thing is that fortune is fate, the world. You're starting a very big new cycle, guys. And I know that sounds very woo-woo for a weekly um, energy, but this is very clear. This is very clear. The other thing that, that's beautiful about this is that and you really are almost like the sandbags that are on an air balloon. You are letting go of whatever ever made you feel crappy in the past and and it's long overdue right the wheel is turning the wheel is turning um the cycle is done with whatever this is and you stirring up your ideas i also get the feeling like you're good with ideas you're an ideas person i think this this churning this because that happens sometimes you know pain and things in life really do act as catalysts and, and believe me I don't like it it's never fun but the beauty of it is that from that you can really propel yourself in a new direction and I'm seeing that and I really I almost am getting that this is your energy I think by the end of the week you're really going to be feeling quite spiritually enlightened I think you're going to get the lesson. That's the other thing you're going to get. You're going to understand. It's almost like you're going to see the this whole situation from a higher perspective. And you're really going to kind of... I, I'm hearing ascend. It's almost like you're ascending. You're, you're, you're rising above this, this lower energy. You are moving forward. You're not afraid. By the middle of the week, you're not going to be afraid to move forward. And that's such a beautiful energy. Because a lot of times, you know, we do kind of, and I'm, I'm guilty. I'm real guilty of this. I, I like to keep myself stuck in things. 
I like to hold on. And sometimes you gotta let go. Sometimes you gotta let go. You know, there's a beautiful line, if you've ever seen the movie, um, The Age of Adeline. Um, you know, her love interest looks at her and he, she, he says, tell me one thing that I can hold on to forever and never let go. And then she leans in and she whispers in his ear and she says, let go. And it is, it's like that. And it, you know, it's one of those things where we always think that by letting go that we're, that it's a bad kind of release. But with this, I think by letting go, you're letting yourself rise to a higher understanding. And I know that sounds very woo-woo, but the, the, I'm really drawn to the Fool. You know, the Fool is not even my favorite. It's not my most favorite card. I like it. It's very sunny and bright, but I'm, I'm a little bit of a stodgy person. So when I see it, I'm like, oh yeah, new start, leap of faith, blah, blah, blah. But here I am, I'm getting this sense of opening in my chest. Like I am seriously getting a feeling like, you're not afraid anymore. You're not afraid to let go, you know, let go. And it's almost by letting go that you receive, you know, you're not losing anything. You're gaining something. And you know that by the end of the week, you know that. The other thing that it might be is that you might very well uh, receive some insight or some words of wisdom from a mentor or someone the other thing is that maybe this experience that you're going through, the, the other thing that I'm seeing is I'm seeing a lot of single people, right? I'm seeing one person, one person in the five, one person is the night, one person is the fool. And um, I do think that you're kind of transforming and I do think, get the feeling like you're alone a lot of the time. Um, I think it would be very beneficial for you to have some kind of secondary affirmation that the transformation that you went through, that what you're feeling, the, the spiritualness, the, the release, the, the, the cathartic, <laughs> um, purging of, of any bad emotions is, is letting you elevate. It's, it's letting you ascend. So maybe you do speak to someone who's of your faith, either that, or you speak to a mentor who understands your, understands you very well. Maybe you talk to them or have a conversation with someone that you trust at the end of the week. And they really, they really help you. The, the other thing that I'm kind of getting is that, um, have you ever had those moments where you're going through a lot and you, you're just managing it, right? You, you're, you're handling your emotions the way that you handle your emotions, right? And that's what I'm getting. You're, you're, you're doing your own thing. You're, you're taking care of you. And have you ever either turned on the TV and in the movie there was a line, just like in Age of Adeline, that line came to me. Or you go to church and something in the sermon really stood out to you or you read a book and some line of wisdom, I think by the end of the week, you're gonna see the higher lesson of this from something that you hear. It could be a lyric of a song. It could be, you know, something, again, something that you hear. And it's just gonna, it's gonna feel like a mentor. The other thing is that if you do have someone that's kind of a spiritual um, counselor, I, if you get a chance to talk to them at the end of the week, and again, this is the end of the week, so this could be Sunday's energy, um, I think that's really going to affirm. The other thing is that this is a lot of hard work, guys. You know, the Wheel of Fortune, the Fool, that's a lot of really hard work. You know, walk, turning away from those cups, that takes guts. That's not easy, <laughs> you know? Cutting things away so they can grow back stronger, pruning your life, that's, that's hard, right? And what I think is lovely is, this is one of my favorite world cards, is that you see the candle in the middle of the globe, and then you see the other planets. Oh, and look guys, you know how I told you that major arcanas are like gears of a clock? Look at that. The wheel of fortune is turning, the planets are turning, you know? Um, the other thing I'm hearing is, you know, this little light of mine, you know, let your light shine, right? Let your light shine. You're gonna, you're gonna feel, I think you're gonna understand your purpose in all of this, in this situation. And I do, I just think that you're gonna feel better. And 
I, I know it sounds real woo-woo, but I just really do think I'm, I'm really seeing that a cycle is closing and a, a, a really strong one is beginning. And you're going to, you and your wisdom, because I do think my, I think my followers and, and I, 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 I get a strong sense just reading your cards. You guys are very insightful. I really get a very strong spiritual vibe. You see things from the higher perspective. You see, you understand the gears of the clock and your part in it. Like you're, you're the candle, right? You're, you're a part of this whole mechanism. And I think by the end of the week, something, you're, you're either gonna just in your own understanding or with a mentor or something that you read or hear is just really gonna affirm this whole journey. And, and again, this is only a weekly energy, but you're having a really strong week. I think you're going to feel these energies very distinctly throughout the week. But definitely embrace your inner knight of swords. Run, baby, run. <laughs> you know, let those let those ideas fly too. And don't uh, the other thing is don't be afraid to swing your sword around, honey. Swing it around your head. Be like, woo. You know, uh, what is it? Uh, <laughs> I've had so many pop culture references this read. I'm sorry. Um, there's a there's a Star Wars Lego game that's so funny, and it's uh, it's like Star Wars Episode One, and they go into the cantina, and what it is is Luke when he draws his lightsaber, he can start a bar a bar brawl. Like if he swings it around, all the all the droids will start coming after you and start a fight. <laughs> So I'm not saying start a fight, but I always think of that. So yeah, swing your sword around. Don't be afraid. You know, um, you're on a mission. You know, the knights, the knights are are more mature energy than a page. But yeah, don't be afraid to trample. The other thing is, I am seriously ga gallop over, gallop past all of that, that all of that gloomy energy. Be like bye bye, bye bye. See ya. Wouldn't want to be ya. And then. Yeah, but wow, yeah, that fool really feels, I think by the middle of the week, you're going to feel really free. And that's the other thing, too, is relish that feeling, you know? Don't don't second-guess yourself. Really relish that sense of relief. And I just, the, by the weekend, you're really going to be in a spiritual mindset. I, I don't know, is it a new moon or a full moon? I think it's going to be... The other thing is it's going to be real Aries energy, because the Mars is in Aries, and then the moon, I think, is going to be in Aries. All right, I'm, I've been rambling all my butt off here. So your fashion oracle, you got Charles Frederick Worth, and I'm gonna have to Google this. I think he's an older uh, designer. He might not be uh, 20th century, but it says, be worth the label. Attention to detail reflects character as, me as much as dress sense. And hot couture is for the royal within. Oh, wow, guys. I really like that. So be worth the label, right? So what he what what he's saying there is think of okay, so really expensive label clothes, right? You know, getting the the high price clothes. Are you going to buy something expensive but feel like you're a cheap person wearing it, right? You're not a cheap person. Be worth the label, right? You know, the other thing that I kind of get from that is um, one of my other cards is really beautiful. It talks about giving yourself the best. Um, I, the other thing this week is because you do have such powerful energies. I really do think that you need, you should give yourself the best this week. Like give yourself the best education, you know, give yourself the best food, you know, wear clothes that feel really good against your skin, be worth the label, right? The other thing is attention to detail reflects character as much as dress sense. So it's really saying notice the little details, you know, really, maybe what I get from that is maybe there's going to be little moments because again I know when you're fighting kind of dark energy yeah, that sounds so ominous when you're fighting those little moments where you know dark thoughts want to creep in um, you know have attention to detail let the light come in and little little spurts you know do little things that really um, brighten brighten your day um, because that reflects your character, right? The, the, the little things that you see that are positive, really, it reaffirms your character um, because you noticed it. You, you observed it. Um, 
And then hot couture is for the royal within. And hot, hot couture is again that's the that's the the clothes that was that are tailored specifically for you, right? I, th I saw a really interesting statistic about this. I'm fascinated by the difference, the differences in generations. Like I, I think we're, I think all generations are meant to work together to help the environment and do things like that. Um, but and to work together, just as a unit. Um, but what I thought was great is that um, you know Gen Z and Xennials, or I'm sorry, Gen X and Xennials, which is my generation. Um, we wore the ugliest, we, we really wore a lot of baggy clothes in the 90s, like we had, it, it's like everything just looked like a potato sack. And it, it was a little bit of an echo of the 80s, like in the 80s a lot of, it was girl power where women were really making their way in the workforce and we wore shoulder plaids. Um, I know this is going to sound dorky. You can skip over this if you don't want to hear this part of the video, but um, I really believe that when it comes to fashion, we go, we recycle a lot. And what happened is at the turn of the century, and actually you kind of see it in this card, at the turn of the century, it was all Victorian. And you did, you had women wearing, you know, layered skirts and, and lace collared things that just covered every inch of your body. And then less than 20 years later in the Roaring Twenties, women started cutting their hair like, like men. They did the boys' haircut. And they would strap their breasts down to be flat-chested. And then they started cutting their skirts to be to the knees, which was really scandalous at the time. To show, to show your calves in the Twenties was actually very avant-garde. It was very not the norm, right? It was, it was a little bit scandalous. So you know, in the 80s, you know, I, I see the same thing in the 80s when women trying to wear shoulder pads and we were trying to dress like men, right? You know, in the 20s, women wanted to be modern. They want to be a modern woman. They didn't want to be like their, like, like their mothers and their grandmothers from the Victorian era. era. You know, it wasn't that they didn't want to be ladylike. It's just they didn't want to be, they wanted to be modern, right? They wanted to be their own woman. And then in the 80s, when women started really going to work more, um, we start wearing shoulder pads and baggy clothes. And and I think it echoed in the 90s where we really did just, we wear these really ill-fitting, humongous pants. And it's funny, you know, the moment that, it, it seems like the generation after yours always rejects everything about your generation. Not in a bad way, it's in a good way. You know, it, it kind of holds a mirror up to everything that we did wrong, right? <laughs> but um, I, th I think it's great the way that um, uh, the, the next generation, uh, generation, um, the millennials, really, everything's tailored with millennial style. You know, they got tired of, you know, one size fits all. And, and it's funny, that really echoes back to turn of century, too, because men wear, wore t tailored suits, right? But, um, so, uh, long story short, hot couture is for the royal within. I think that's what that means. Hot couture is the, the clothes that uh, you, have a, you, you, you pay to have a fashion desire, designer make that dress for you, right? It is your signature style. And it costs more but it's for the royal within. You are royal, right? And um, the way it applies to your read is that I do just think that, I think that y what you have inside, you really need to let out. But um, as far as, you know, the generations, I think, you know, millennials really have changed that style where, and then the irony is that I really think Gen Y is going right back to the baggy clothes. I'm seeing so many like extra large sweatshirts and tie dye. I'm, I'm telling you guys, it's like every other generation, we just rebel against the generation before. And, and, and I'm just going to wait for parachute pants to come back because you know what? <laughs> you know, combat boots and, you know, tank tops with parachute pants or uh, cargo pants. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, that's, it's, it'll be here. It'll come back. It always does. All right, guys. Well, I hope you enjoyed. I definitely got goofy and that definitely got long. And I'm going to start shortening these up. Um, I am going to try to do more. I'm going to start trying to do maybe a 10-minute, 20-minute read. If that's something that you'd like, because I know not everybody has, you know, all this time to listen, um, 
you know, the weekly energies I want to give more attention to. But um, if there is a subject you want me to read on, please let me know. I would try to make it a very brief read. It would be a pick a pile. Each pile would be no more than five to ten minutes, and um, it's long overdue. If you get a chance to check it out, um, I do do a second read each week. It's the How to Tarot. The beginning of the read, we talk about the card in question, just the symbolism, so you, you can learn the tarot. And then if not, you can always skip straight to your read, and we um, you, the viewer, get to choose uh, which deck, and we go ahead and see how that card resonates in your life. But I hope you can join me then, and thank you for stopping by, and I'll catch you later. Bye.